Welcome guys to today's lecture on uh, Rook Endgames, Insane the Endgame, and our topic for today will be Rook Endgames. And um, I think that I already covered like the other time when I was Grandmaster Resident some Rook Endgames, and today will be sort of part two for of this material because already I remember back then I prepared lots of stuff, but uh, ever since lots of things happened and I discovered some new things. So I just wanted uh, to build up on the previous lecture that I uh, devoted to Rook Endgames. And uh, so let's get started. So the first position that I wanted to talk about is from a uh, recent game of Jeffrey Zhang against uh, Magnus Carlsen. And uh, this was from the Clutch Chess International, happened a few days ago. Uh, that finished a few days ago. Uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, beat Jeffrey in the first round, as we all know. Uh, but the fight was pretty much even, uh, and uh, even though Jeffrey lost first few games, even eventually uh, it was down to this game that basically Jeffrey was pushing and eventually uh, had to be defending such endgame, uh, which happened like this. I just moved uh, a few moves back, and. After you know lots of complications, the middle game, uh, Jeffrey found he found himself uh, in this position where he is exchanged up, but he doesn't have any real winning chances because 95 is just so powerful. He was forced to trade it, and suddenly uh, we got this position where uh, Black has a bare pawn structure, but White's rook is very active, and uh, basically just a draw with correct play. However, uh, Jeffrey managed to lose this. So let's see what happened. And uh, c4, uh, rook f6, king g4, so far so good, king g7. And uh, right now you need to ask yourself basically what's the, what, what is black's plan? And uh, what can you do to stop this? And once you uh, ask yourself this question, basically the answer is pretty simple. Uh, only plan that black can sort of you know to how black can win this is by activating this rook somewhere that's it to f1 h1 to h4 to collect this h4 pawn and uh, try to uh, create some pass pawns on the on the king side but as we see whenever this rook from f6 moves pawn c6 will be hanging therefore uh pawn c will be hanging whenever this rook goes here rook on c6 is just falling and then pawn on c4 will be actually a very strong pawn because it's actually can advance very quickly with c5, rook c7 check, c6 and so on. So it's not so simple uh, for, for black to make any progress here. Having said this, uh, I think that's the simplest way to hold this position is just to play king e3 and just wait it out and there is simply nothing what black can do. There is no way to create uh, any, any progress here with black. Because after king h6, for instance, king e4 come back. King a, there is no g5 because h takes g5. Rook e6 just king f4 doesn't really matter. King h7, let's say I just try to you know play some move, move pieces around. But again, just king f3 just staying in the same place. So I tried eventually to bring my king to d6 and uh, kick this rook out of c5 and then try to then activate my rook. But as we can see, after rook g5, it's the same defensive idea, but again from the other side, like right now the rook is uh, attacking pawn on g6 and black rook from e6 cannot be activated. Therefore it's just a dead draw. There is no way to improve with black and uh, this was the simplest path to, 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 to draw. So uh, having said that, uh, this was the best defense, uh, And but Jeffrey in time pressure uh, played rook e5 and Magnus immediately sees initiative by playing rook f1. and. Uh, that's the big problem with the rook e5 because on one moment, uh, in one moment, uh, white rook is not anymore attacking the c6 pawn, and as we know in endgame, rook endgames, specifically rook endgames, uh, active rook is the an act, active rook is, but also active king, but especially active rook is very very important. Uh, so here Magnus immediately activated his rook to f1, and suddenly position is not so easy, and right now still I believe uh, Jeffrey could have defended this by playing uh, rook e7, but again, it's all about rook's activity right now, king h6 and uh, rook c7, trying to finally get to the 6th pawn, however, position is not simple by any means, I, I, I analyze rook h1, rook takes 6, rook takes h4, king e5, 
again makes makes a lot of sense to play king e5 because if let's say king goes to f3 it will be probably very bad because uh, if whenever white pushes the c5 uh, pawn uh, will be let's say rook c4 let's say rook g4 let's say c5 rook c4 will be simply winning for black therefore therefore king f3 is too passive and that's the reason why uh, why black white should play king e5 uh, rook h2 uh, attacking the c2 pawn c5 uh, throwing a check uh, probably doesn't matter uh, finally h4 rook c8 king h7 c6 pushing the pawn forward and uh, again it's, it's, a, it's a little bit pawn race here and i feel like uh, black uh, has some chances here but in general white should be able to hold it and for instance rook b8 trying to retreat the rook and then try to play c7 king d7 uh, and uh, this i believe should be a draw let's say g5 if c4 then h2 rook b1 as i was saying g4 c7 rook e8 if and now rook b8 uh, is the only path to equality after h1 queen root takes e8 all this as i can check with engines is the best path for for both sides and here it is finally a draw however this position uh, however is this is the best path for white it means that already after move like rook e5 here it means that this is serious mistake and makes white's task so much harder than you, sh you than they should be from such position here uh, therefore here after rook f1 white is under serious pressure and uh, again the best way to defend it was to activate the rook but here jeffy again under time pressure played king d4 and is already lost rook f4 if king d3 just rook, rook takes h4 just is much worse version of what we just discussed because rook e6 I mean, or c5 black spawns are just much faster so there is no reason to uh i mean it's just it's just lost so king c4 uh, i mean jeffrey played rook e4 but simply lost pawn ending after this this king f4 and right now important move c5 but it's quite easy obviously c3 and g5 and here jeffrey resigned so it's tragic ending uh, for for jeffrey uh, but uh, the very destructive moment here is that he let go for one moment uh, to, um, you know, lost control over what's going on and played rook e5. And suddenly, after rook f1, it's an extremely difficult position, at least from a practical perspective. Computers, of course, save it quite easily by playing this, the line that I suggested with rook e7 and rook c7. But anyway, uh, here, after rook e5, uh, rook f1, black has very big chances and for, for win and Jeffrey immediately made a mistake by, by playing king d4. So this is the first position I'm going to talk about. Uh, second one uh, will be uh, from, uh, and this is actually interesting because the second position uh, is very similar that I want to talk about. It's very similar to the game that I played against Taimur Rajah 2013. And this, uh, this is the game I showed already last time. And uh, I'll just quickly do a small recap on this game uh, because here after, uh, let's say, the, let's say in this position, right? So this is basically uh, pretty much drawish endgame seemingly. And of course, uh, h5 is the best defense. And uh, I think, I will I'll repeat this again, the best attempt for white to create any winning chances or let's say practical winning chances is to uh, play, uh, let's say here, h4. And try to get to play at some point g4 and trade those pawns and again try to trade uh, h4 h pawn for g pawn and this and if if white can have any chances for uh, real chances for it it should be there uh, at least practical of course it's still draw with correct play but for for instance i i managed to lose this game so there are some difficulties however uh, in this game this is game by the way picket kasparov uh, from 2000 from year 2000 and uh, the game happened f4 so i don't think that this is actually the best uh, attempt for white to win this however in this game Pickett managed to beat gary and uh, he i mean it was impressive how he did but the there another thing that's kind of impressive about this game is what kind of ideas in seemingly drawish end game like this there still exist so uh, let's have a look the game happened g6 and uh, this is obviously the correct setup e5 uh, rook d3 uh, king h3 and uh, kaspar played rook e3 king h4 so far so good king g7 
uh, king is perfectly placed on g7 and king g5. So basically white tried to uh, create this pawn chain with the pawns uh, from h2 through g3, f4 to e5 and then bring the king uh, through g2 uh, to h4 and then g5. This king on g5 is definitely very active and if it could, of course, it would be ideally placed on f6. Um, however, black's king is obviously placed well on g7 and it's no uh, not easy task for uh, for white king to get any further. Therefore, uh, in here, but but by this position, uh, Kasparov made a losing mistake, and this is extremely instructive, I believe, because uh, such move is probably one of the most I don't know expected moves to be played here in this position, and this move is here is rook e1. Seemingly, this move is. Like it's okay, like you know, white didn't create any threats. Rook on e1 is, let's say, normally placed. Uh, stops all kind of uh, moves like e6 the, or f5. There is no uh, any breakthrough here. And uh, if let's say this rook goes somewhere, uh, then we can go to the e2 file and attack uh, while white pawns uh, white pawn on h2. And let's say white goes h3, then rook e3, and there is some counterplay. So seemingly this is a very uh, valid, uh, you know, defensive setup. However, it is not. And we'll see in a moment why. And the best defense here is rook a3. The best defense is rook a3, and this is uh, the idea behind this move is to play after rook c7 uh, to play rook a5. Basically, we need to pin this pawn and the king in order to uh, on the, the fifth rank and prevent all kind of a e6 and f5 uh, through uh, the having uh, by having this pawn on this rook on, on the fifth rank. And this is uh, basically uh, nearly immediate draw. There is no way to improve this position uh, with, uh, with, with white. So in the game happened rook e1. And we'll see in a moment an uh, example what happened and uh, like what, what could have happened in similar game. And I will discuss in a moment. Uh, there was game uh, Aravind, uh, sorry, Michael Adams versus uh, Aravind in 2019, I believe. And we'll see this in a moment uh, where uh, Aravind presented a very good defensive setup, so we'll see this in a moment. But let's see why. Uh, let's see first why rook e1 loses. And the thing is that right now, after rook c7, winning move, uh, black is simply in sort of a Zugzwang. And uh, white has very powerful threats, uh, or threat of playing rook e7, uh, rook e7, and then after rook e7, to, of playing uh, move f5. And if white can get this, uh, basically, all the suddenly all the pawn structure for black will uh, fall apart, and there is no way to to you know to really stop this right now. So uh, there are basically several moves. Let's say if rook e3 just comes back, rook e7, and nothing really changes, and suddenly the next move is f5, and it's game over. If uh, rook e2 happens, this is what happened in the game. Again, rook e7 happens, f5 is coming, and there is no way basically to stop this. Let's say if, if the game, uh, if, in the, if rook e1, for instance, suddenly e6 um, is, uh, the, of course, f5 or e6 are two basically winning threats here. So uh, if e6 takes, takes, and suddenly after h3, white is winning by force this position. Uh, if king f7, king h6, and uh, king f6, and suddenly now g4. And this is just game over because it, with this pawn, end game is winning. If king f7, there is g5. Pawn g6 is falling. Uh, if g, if h4, uh, sorry, h4, then g5, king f5, king g7, and basically everything is forced right now. There is no any other moves. King takes g6, e5, trying to uh, get the pawn uh, to the e1 uh, queen. King f6, e4, g6, e3, g7, e2, g8, queen, e1, queen, queen g4, king e3, queen e6. Trading the queens and king g5, king f2, king h4, king f3, king g5, and white wins. Basically, everything is just forced. As I checked, there is no any room for improvement from neither of the sides. There is no, there are no alternatives. Every, everything is just forced, and this leads to such 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 a win for white. There is nothing better for for both colors, so uh, for both sides. So here. If rook e1, this is the problem. If this e6 wins, f5 is also possible, but e6 just wins on the spot. Uh, and after rook a2, this is what happened in the game. Right now, the other idea f5. G takes f5, and right now e6. 
and uh, basically the thing is that if we go e6 immediately there is po possible check rook a5 and uh, our king is uh, forced uh, you know to go go back and after this there could be king f6 move and suddenly it, it's still a draw so uh, it's not so easy uh, here therefore we did, this is the reason we play at first f5 to cover the fifth rank and now play e6 and we are just collecting pawn on f7 and that's game over and this is how the game ended h4 rook takes f7 king g8 and king f6 Garry Kasparov resigned just simply lost position there is simply nothing to discuss here it's just just winning however there i while analyzing this um, I was really curious about it. Is it already like so bad after rook e1? Is it really so bad after rook e1, rook 7 that you know it's simply lost? And then I discovered that there could be some uh, interesting idea of rook e4. And the idea is that, of course, f5 right now is not possible. And uh, if because if f5, then rook g4 checkmate. Um, and if rook e7. Uh, that suddenly rook a4 and as you can see in this position after rook e2 here uh, rook e7 rook a2 right now f5 wins but if the same position uh, like in this position rook is not on a2 but on a4 so we'll move there one in a moment this position after f5 there is rook g4 checkmate so uh, this it would be still a draw if uh, let's say rook e4 uh, if black played rook e4 and right now rook beating rook meeting rook e7 with rook a4 uh, it's suddenly still a draw because e6 rook a5 is the same uh, defensive idea and f5 is not possible and without it we while black rook goes to a5 and it's a draw so uh, what can white do and here i found a astonishing resource which is uh i know it's, 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 it's extremely hard to find over the board and kind of like to understand why, but rook a7. Uh, sorry, rook a7. Rook a7 move uh, simply uh, put black in Zugzwang. There is no. Rook on, a, rook, rook on e4 was perfectly placed. And uh, it was uh, basically uh, stopping uh, white's, uh, white's counter, white's attack, white's attacking ideas connected with e6 and f5. But right now, uh, if this mo rook moves from e4, suddenly the ideas of f5 and e6 uh, will be available. And But so we might ask, what happens after, let's say, after rook b4? Let's say e6, still we can give a check. And, uh, you know, it's still, like, not, not a big deal. Uh, or uh, if f5, rook g4, still seemingly it's quite okay. Uh, so right now, g4. g4 is a very powerful move. And the idea is again to play at some point f5 and to cover uh, g4 square that black rook can can play rook g4. So after g4, h takes g4, f5. Uh, right now and after this, e6. And this is again winning for white because we take on f7 and the king comes to f6 and uh, e pawn e6 is just simply too powerful to be uh, stopped with the support of the rook on, and, and king on uh, on f6. Uh, White is simply winning. Rook b6, rook takes f7, king g8, and king f6. For instance, if f4 tries to try to get uh, activate some pawns and maybe you know push them forward, rook g7, and we can just take this, and this is just game over. So uh, after rook e4, is it in position? Rook e7, rook e4, rook a7 is amazing resource uh, here for for white, and uh, it leads to nicely winning uh, endgame here so uh, but this was the last trick basically so if uh, if let's say rook e4 not rook a7 but rook e7 with the same idea suddenly rook a4 doesn't lead anywhere it's simply uh, a draw so uh, having said that uh, let's uh, let's let's move to the next game that i wanted to talk about and the next game what I'm gonna uh, talk about is uh, Adams versus Ad Aravind. And as we can see, the end game is very, very similar. And in here, e5, king f8, f4, uh, king e7, rook a2, rook b3, king h3. As you, can, you guys can see, is exactly the same type of end game. 
But right now, Aravin defended very nicely, and he, he let's, let's see how he did, because I have nothing to add to his, to his defense right now. Rook b5 is, well, was a little bit more accurate, because just placing this rook on the fifth rank is just immediate draw. Rook, but he played rook b7, which is also good. Uh, rook a3, rook c7, h3, rook c5. Just right now placing the rook on the fifth rank. Uh, Adams play g4, takes takes, rook c5. And uh, if rook e7, just rook a5, and this is the one of the most important positions here, there is no way for, for white to improve in this position. Because right now, after, let's say, f5, uh, black has a very nice tactical idea of playing rook takes e5. If rook takes e5, f6, king f4, f takes e5, everything is beginning immediately simplified. King takes e5, king f7 is just that draw because of the opposition. King, uh, let's say, king g5, king g7, obviously. Uh, if g5 draw so this is very important idea to remember i will show it once again uh, in this position to place the rook on a fifth rank and always whenever this happens uh, rook e7 just rook stays on the fifth rank and if f5 happens then rook takes uh, a5 uh, sorry rook f5 rook takes e5 rook takes e5 and f6 and this is just game over so uh, here uh, yeah, so this is basically all for 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 this line. Uh, for, uh, sorry, for uh, for this end game because this is just very simple. But you know, if Gary Gasparov didn't manage to save this, it means that it's not without tricks. So therefore, it's important to know even such simple end games how to how to defend in them. So uh, let's go to the next one. And. Uh, the next one uh, will be uh, this position from game. Aronian versus uh, Nakamura, and this is from Candidates Tournament uh, from Moscow 2016. Uh, and in this position, I mean, basically, the end game, uh, the, the, the terminal game, uh, uh, Levon Aronian was pressing for a win. He had very nice position out of the opening. And finally, he found himself, uh, players found themselves in this end game, where certainly White has big advantage. Uh, the question whether it's sufficient to win. So let's evaluate this. Uh, like in like why I mean like not not evaluate because I just evaluated it, but like why why this better? Definitely because of the activity of pieces. First of all, rook white rook is much more active than black rook. Uh, another thing, king is a little, little bit act more active than black king. And uh, right now, uh, also the pawn structure, even though it seems like white has destroyed pawn structure because of the pawns of an f4 e3 f2 and uh, a little bit isolated pawn on h4, it is still white who has bare pawn structure because it is white uh, right now to play and white can play move c4. And uh, with, move, with move c4, pawns b6 and c5 are blocked and uh, whenever a black will try to play b5, uh, c5 and a4 pawns will be uh, simply weak. And on top of this, white can play move like e4, e5, maybe, uh, and try to maybe make pawn, break, pawn breakthrough with f5. That's why uh, I think that white has really, really good chances to win this. In the game happened king g7, e4, uh, very good, and the idea is to play e5. And in this position, uh, the best defense was rook e7. And the idea of rook e7 is to play simply rook b7 and b5, uh, trying to simplify the position and let's say e5 rook b7 with idea, with idea b5 in such rook end games especially when they're uh, you are when you are defending you should try to exchange as many points as possible in order to simplify the position and try to uh, even if for, for even if you have to give the pawn or something uh, usually when there are less pieces on the board there are some drawing chances and this is the perfect example for this because after rook b7 black tries to play b5 and uh, tries to simplify the position and eventually try to hope to defend four versus three which is a little bit different than with the four versus three which we discussed in the two previous games uh kaspar uh, Piquet kasparov and uh, adams aravind so uh here i analyze actually quite a lot and i thought uh okay just just to show rook d if rook d6 let's say b5 see the, uh, and rook a6 uh, the position uh, is getting simplified after uh, takes takes rook b4 and rook a5 white wins the pawn on c5 that's true but uh, it's not easy to make progress here uh, with white uh, because first of all 
I mean, there are many moves that which can uh, happen, but let's say h, if h5, rook takes c5, rook a4, and pawn on a2 is, is uh, basically gone, and uh, so is pawn c4, but again, black's task is to defend, and for to, to defend it, we need to eliminate uh, as, I mean, or like exchange as many pawns as possible and try to simplify the position. So this is the major defensive idea here for black. If black decides to play some move like f5, and uh, here position gets pretty sharp, but still with correct defense, it leads to a draw. Let's say it takes king f4, f6. Again, we try to simplify the position as much as possible. White doesn't want to simplify the position, but again, we just take f3. Otherwise, we just, uh, you know, there is like we take on f2 and it's, simple, it is, it's a simple draw. After f3, rook e2, king takes f5, uh, rook e5, it's everything go, goes by force. It's not, not, not still an easy endgame, but uh, it, it is, is it's just a draw. So after takes, takes, king takes e5, c3, king d6, c2, e, uh, e7, c1, queen, e8, queen, queen a3. There is no way that neither side can, uh, that either side can win this with, you know, okay, it's just a draw, like this endgame is just drawn. So this was the best defense. If uh, rook e7, rook b7. So, if the rook d6, b5, it is, we discussed, this basically very likely a draw. Uh, so what why, what else can white do? And the best, I thought, attempt for white to create any sort of chances is to play h5, try to break white black spawn structure uh, here on the on the king side in order to, uh, after g takes h5, play f5 and have those two pass pawns, it's not pass pawns, but like two uh, strong pawns on, f5 and, uh, on e5 and f5 and uh, try to bring the king forward and uh, you know maybe create a, a pass pawn uh, using those e5 and f5 pawns so uh, this is uh, this was actually better chance however after b5 takes takes rook d7 and the idea is of course e6 i feel like uh, black has enough counterplay again to make a draw after c4 king e4 and h4. Suddenly, because of this extra pawn uh, uh, on h file, black can create more counterplay by pushing this pawn forward. Let's say e6, h3, rook f7, king g8, uh, rook f6, c3. Suddenly, it's not easy to stop those pawns uh, without uh, kind of giving up the initiative. So if king d3, king is right not as active on d3 as it was on e4, rook c5, king c2, and let's say rook e5, uh, I don't see, uh, to be honest, uh, how uh, white can really improve here, because h2 is coming, both pawns will start collapsing, there's also rook e2, rook f2 coming in, possibly, king g7 also could be an annoying uh, move to, to face, I don't think that there is enough, basically, uh, you know, there, there is, you know, enough for, you know, for white to, to play for, because the king is only to suddenly so passive, and black rook is so active, pawn h3 creates more than enough counterplay, and uh, if black white rook decides to stop with this pawn h3, uh, they will give up pawns very likely f5 and e6, so it will be very likely just a draw. So this was the best defense, rook e7, and by some reason here, I don't know exactly why, but Hikaru played rook e8, and uh, maybe it was just kind of like sort of, uh, he, I, I don't know what happened, but rook e8 is a little bit weird, uh, because it's the same idea as rook e7, rook b7, but rook on e8 is much a uh, worse place because on uh, the because right now white rook can uh, jump into seventh rank and there, there are all the time issues with this e5, e6 idea. So let's see what happened in the game. e5, rook b8, and as I was saying, right now rook d7. And if we look at this position earlier, with the rook e7 and e5, rook b7, rook is placed right now on b7. And but this position is on b8 and gives white additional uh, option of rook d7. And right now e6 is coming in, uh, is a big threat. And white gains essential tempi in creating uh, the attack uh, right now, or, or like, you know, developing the initiative on the king side. If king f8, f5, g takes f5, king f4. Uh, yeah, so I just make, should make a note here. A five is typical idea, obviously. Try to you know uh, sacrifice temporarily a pawn, but instead, but uh, after takes, king f4, king takes a five, and ideally king f6, king will be very active. So this is the very good technique by Levon. B5 takes rook takes b5, king takes a five, and this is uh, pretty much very important position right now. Uh, in general, I feel like position is 
maybe still holdable. I analyzed it a lot, but couldn't get to the sort of final, uh, kind of like final conclusion whether it's lost or is not lost. Definitely, what uh, create well, white has lots of chances to win this, and black's defense black defensive task is extremely hard. Uh, just but because just look like this king on the fire is so active. King f six is very often a, a big threat. And if what the, the pawn from f2 can join, let's say, f4 and then king can go somewhere and then f5, the suddenly those pawns will create lots of tactical ideas for white. And just the fact that there are still those pawns on the, the queen side, it doesn't make a, a black task any easier. So right now, I will just quickly show uh, what happened in the game. a3. And this is horrible mistake. Because right now, after this move, uh, black is uh, simply lost immediately. And by some reason, I don't know exactly why, but Levon didn't do it. Uh, because he played f4, which is kind of returning simply the favor. Right now, after king f6, uh, the most logical move, rook d8 is a mate, uh, mating threat of mating 1. Rook b6 checks, uh, rook d6. And this is just game over. Black cannot trade. Maybe this is what uh, he missed or something. Let's say this, this, and uh, king e5. And this is, uh, both, maybe this is what both players missed. After king e5, I feel like this is just game over because king d5, uh, sorry, king d7, king d5, and uh, we collect the c5 pawn. And if, let's say, I don't know, king d7, king d5, c4, king takes c4, king d6, we are just collecting this pawn and with the, let's say, I don't know, king d5 or king, king a3, with the uh, extra pawn which is kind of on the side, we can deflect black king to this pawn. Uh, we can deflect black king to this pawn and we can, of course, run away run with our king to the queen king side. This is just game over. So I don't understand what, what happened during, maybe it was kind of like time pressure or something. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. But... Uh, after here, king f6, position, rook d6, it is just winning immediately for for white. So after rook b8, f4, rook c8, let's say, f5, c4, and finally rook d7. Uh, as I was saying, if white king can move, let's say, ideally forward to f6, and then white pawns join, joins f4 uh, with f4 and f5, and black rook goes to d7, uh, right now, rook f7 is, you know, winning. If we can play, and if rook c6, then just e6 is covering the sixth rank, and this pawn on six is much faster because we are not only trying to promote the the pawn on e6, but they're also trying to mate with rook d8, or maybe if rook c8, then we can consider rook h7, rook h8, for instance. Uh, also, rook f7 should be winning. I mean, it's simply winning position for uh, for white. So. Uh, therefore, I don't. And if c3, rook f7, the say king e8, rook g7. Let's say king f8, e6 is very similar, just e7, rook g8 is just game over. So, having said that, I don't really understand, uh, I don't know, what happened here for to both of us uh, super grandmasters, that you know, like that Hikaru blundered king f6 and Levon didn't play king f6. It's just hard to understand right now. But, uh, you know, usually when you can play king f6 and tactically right now, if it all works, you should just do it. So, anyway. Uh, in the game happened f4, and we'll get there in a moment. Uh, actually, uh, no, let, let's actually discuss here. After f, because a3 happened in the game. That's why a3 is a mistake. Let's discuss first what was the best chance. And I, I think the, the best defense here was king e8. We need to kick this rook out from d7. That first of all, whenever king goes to f6, there, was, there is never rook d6. So uh, let's say if rook c7. I feel I thought it was the best chance. Uh, Black tries to counterplay with rook b2, attacking uh, both pawns a2 and f2. If f4, uh, suddenly a3 makes sense, uh, trying to take on a2 and push uh, push the a pawn as as far as possible. And the thing is, right now after king f6, uh, you could see that earlier with the king on uh, f8 and rook on d7, there was rook b6. Uh, after rook b6, there was rook d6 always. Right now, it's not possible because our rook is on c7. That's why if king g7, let's say rook g6, the rook drives the king out of the center, it goes to a king, goes to h7, and rook g4. And still, there are lots of chances for white, but I feel like eventually black has some chances to hold this. However, it's by, not, it's by any means not so easy. 
let's say f5, c4, f6, h5, the rook e7 checking, f8, and the question whether white has here anything, let's say anything better than rook e7 and just go somewhere with the rook. To be honest, I don't know. I try to find, but like I, uh, I, it feels to me that black has enough defensive resources because pawn h4 is also hanging. Pawn c4 is uh, still, it's still there, and it's, possi it's possible that uh, if the rook goes from c7 somewhere, that the c3 pawn will just go forward. And both importantly, as I said, pawn h4 is hanging, so if the pawn is lost, this h5 pawn can go forward as well. And with such bad king on h7 for white i'm not sure whether white has enough uh, resources to uh, to win this that's why uh, i feel i think that uh, the best defense here was not king f6 but rook takes c5 just eliminate this pawn rook takes a2 and rook a5 uh, bring this rook behind the pawn which is uh, normally typical idea and right now the threat is obviously king f6 and f5 because if we can get this normally we should be winning with white here but it's again not so easy because rook h2 and uh, right now for king f6 was the most logical move and uh, rook f2 and after f5 a2 and the question is whether here white can win and to be honest i found some uh, some ideas here for white but i am not entirely sure whether there are enough uh, you know chances to win this because uh, bon bon the pawn on a2 is so advanced and creates enough counterplay uh, for black because our rook uh, on our our i mean white rook is has to you know take care of basically this pawn if a2 so i basically analyzed here many things but i thought that this this and h5 is the most kind of like principled to fight, way to fight for for advantage here and the idea is that here black is in sort of Zugzwang, because the rook has to be defending somehow this uh, pawn on a2, so it can go anywhere, and this pawn, rook on f2, also has to be attacking pawn on f5. Because if white can play king takes f7 with, uh, with, without giving this f5 pawn, uh, white will uh, be simply winning. So, uh, if this is the case, black uh, has to move the king. So after king c6, right now I thought e6 is the best move, and after this, king takes e6 and trying to push this pawn forward, f6 and f7 and so on. However, king b7 is everything nearly all by force, rook a3, and right now, basically, uh, amazing idea, amazing defensive uh, resource here by uh, by black, rook c2. It's completely like computer chess right now. Uh, idea is rook c6, rook a6, obviously. Uh, but you know, such moves are you know over the board are you know especially in time travel, uh, are hard to find. Uh, so, uh, I mean, on, on top of this, there is uh, it's all analysis. So I analyze it and, uh, you know, perfectly black probably can hold. But in real game, uh, I'm not entirely convinced whether uh, white can, uh, whether black can actually hold, would be able to hold this. That's why I feel like white has lots and lots of winning chances. Let's say king f7 I was analyzing, rook c7 check, king g6, rook c6. And f6, rook a6, that's the entire point of uh, rook c2, and then try to bring the rook to the 6th rank with check, and then play rook a6, trying to uh, push this pawn forward. And right now I thought rook takes a6, f7, a1 queen, f8 queen, and we will get to this endgame, which is basically another story, uh, you know, which is, I mean, this endgame is theoretically drawn. But, you know, whether in real game, the player playing with black pieces can make a draw here, it's a completely different story, because... You know, there are lots of ideas uh, for white to try and to kind of trick uh, the opponent. Uh, and uh, it's not, from practical perspective, easy to uh, defend it, even though objectively, of course, it is a draw and table basically will confirm that. But, you know, it's not always uh, all the time about table bases and, uh, you know, what's theoretically winning or drawn, but what about, uh, what's more about theoretical, uh, I mean, sort of practical problems that you can actually pose to your opponent. And here, certainly there are some problems still to resolve with black, right? So uh, it's not so easy. It's not so easy. Even though this was, King E8 was the best defense. But, you know, if King E8 was the best defense here and leads to such crazy position with such crazy line, it means that very likely, practically, position is nearly lost for, for black. Uh, in my opinion, obviously. So uh, after king f5, uh, Hikaru played a3, which is 
very very bad mistake of course king f6 right now wins as i was mentioning earlier however uh 11 played f4 which is sort of you know returning the favor I don't understand, uh, as I was saying, what happened that he played f4, but uh, this, uh, you know, right now, rook b4, after rook b4, it's not easy anymore to win this because king f6, rook takes f4. So, 11 played uh, rook a7, c4, rook takes a3, uh, collecting the pawn, but right now, rook b2, and again, uh, black, uh, you know, black has enough counterplay because it is pretty much very hard to... Uh, Protect, uh, save this pawn on a2 as both pawns uh, a2 and c4 very likely would be traded. Uh, let's say if c3 would take c3 would take a2. Uh, if, of course, if black was to play right now. So uh, if, if and if both pawns are traded, very likely the rising position is just drawn. So uh, rook a6. It happened in the game. Uh, king g7. And right now, uh, I feel like this is the most important position from this game. Uh, this is so important right now because I think this was kind of missed by commentators. Maybe I'm wrong. I apologize if I'm wrong. But like, uh, simply here, the position is still extremely difficult for white. Uh, sorry, for black. And black, even though it seems like you know this so c3, c2 is our next uh, moves, and uh, this a2 pawn will be traded for c4 pawn. And this is what happened in the game. I will quickly show what happened next few moves in the game. And, uh, you know, this is what happened. Pawn on A is gone. And uh, C pawn is also gone. And in this position, uh, it is, you know, of course, huge achievement by black. And the uh, position, normally the game should be drawn here. And we'll, uh, we'll let's see uh, maybe at first what happened in the game. And we'll get back to this moment. To this moment. What white could have done differently? So let's see uh, the games first. C3, rook a7, c2, rook c7, rook, c rook b4, rook, uh, I mean a5, rook a4, rook takes c2, rook takes a5. And right now uh, the game went on in this position. So as we see, this is very similar position to the position we discussed earlier in the games of Piquet Kasparov and uh, um, Adams Aravin. Is the difference is that there are no g pawns here. Apart from it, it's pretty much the same. Uh, but yeah, this creates some, some chances for white, but with correct defense, black should easily defend it. Rook c7, king f8, obviously. We can't allow e6. e6 is one of the you know main ideas here, so we can't allow this with black, king f8. If king f6, rook a6, obviously. Rook d7, rook a4, putting some pressure on the four pawn. Uh, rook d3, maneuvering around, bringing pieces uh, you know, here and there. Rook d4, rook c1, uh, rook b4. Uh, if king g4, if if white wanted to get to h6 pawn, it's not so easy because after here suddenly white black is even willingly given this pawn in order to activate this king to f5 with basically just drawn position. There is no way white could improve here. Uh, if rook b4, uh, which happened in the game, just king f8 back. Uh, rook b6, king g7 protecting the pawn. Rook b7, again just back. No, no real progress. Rook a1, rook d4, rook a2, rook d7. And finally, uh, in this position, uh, Levon managed to trick Hika Hikaru because, uh, as we have seen several times on several occasions earlier, he played here rook b4, rook b, uh, let's say here rook b7, king f8, and here if let's say king f6, there will be of course rook c6, right? But in here rook b8, finally he moved this rook to d4, and right now he played rook d7. So right now, if king f8, there is king f6, obviously. And suddenly, after rook f6 and rook a6, there is rook d6. And the game is over. This is how uh, Levon won this. The game is over. The king got to f6. Pawn is going to f5. Uh, king can be kicked out from f6. And uh, it's simply, simply winning. And so let's see how the game finished. Rook a8, uh, h5, king g8, f5. Rook b8, rook d7. Uh, rook b6. Uh, king e7, suddenly, you know, the king, you know, enters the seventh rank, and uh, it's all basically, you know, just winning because e6 is coming in and the uh, pawn is basically promoted to the queen and game over. Uh, so here, actually, he got resigned in the view of e6. Uh, however, let's, let's move, let's, let's move back. And here, uh, king f8 happened. 
but uh, still I believe that there was there were still enough drawing chances as after Rugi too. There is not no it, it is not easy for uh, for White to make any progress still even in this position. Uh, let's say uh, if uh, right now Rugi seven we go simply Rugi two, and if E six Rugi five check always. This at the idea of checking on a, on the fifth rank to the king and driving it backwards, uh, you know to let's say fourth rank, it's very important uh, the defensive idea in all those type of positions. If h5 we can just wait, rook 7, rook e2 we just wait, and uh, rook a2 if whenever e6 just rook a5 check, and here king f8, let's say uh, if king f6, rook a6, and this is just a dead draw, no, no, no any, uh, you know, progress is available basically, black, black should be able to hold it. Uh, so. This is how Levon managed to trick uh, Hikaru because he play, Hikaru played King of 8, King of 6 with winning position. Uh, however, Rook E2 was still holding a draw. However, uh, but anyway, this this endgame should be generally drawn. So if White, uh, sorry, if Black manages to trade those uh, pawns uh, A and C, uh, then this four, uh, sorry, three versus two on the on one side, even though without G, G file uh, G pawns. It should be drawn. So in here, uh, let's 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 move back few moves in this end game and see what uh, white because this is basically the critical position. In this position, if uh, those pawns are still there, so white should look for the sort of an attempt to look for something uh, that involves those pawns still on the board and not and not to tr try to not to trade them because if they're on the board it means that white has more uh, winning chances here uh, because without them it's basically pretty straightforward draw draw as we have seen in the um, like in the analysis that i just shown so here i believe that the best defense best attacking uh, idea here for white is to play rook a7 and what, what's, what's going on? The idea is to play e6, of course. Uh, so black has to defend somewhat from this. Let's say if c5 happens, e6, rook b5, king e4, rook c5, I, it's also possible. Rook takes f7, uh, king g8. <clears throat> and uh, right now, very strong move, rook f6. Of course, it's computer analysis. Maybe it's over the board, very hard to find it, but like, that's the entire point of you know this lecture and kind of like trying to understand what are the ideas and kind of like why rook end games are sort of so insane like, like you know, if i can put it like this because uh, there are lots of ideas for both sides and it's it's from learning perspective it's uh, it's just it's just it's just great so uh, rook f6 rook c7 and uh, the idea is if c2 uh, if i'm not mistaken just uh, e7 and if the rook c8 the idea is rook c6 it's a beautiful idea uh, that basically stopping this pawn, uh, stopping the c pawn by you know uh, with this tactical uh, you know uh, resource that black, with white has. So c2 is not possible. Therefore, black has to play rook c7. And uh, right now, white has two options. And to be honest, I'm not con sure which one is the, the the better one. I will show both because uh, it's just just really really. Uh, you know, confusing to analyze this. And let's say one is king d3 and second one is rook g6. So the idea of king d3 is basically to start this pawn uh, with the king, uh, if king d3, c2, and e7. And if rook takes e7, uh, king takes c2. And uh, this should be winning because there are two uh, extra pawns for white. Should, uh, and if c c1, uh, queen, e8, queen. But Black doesn't have to promote to the queen. There is also possibility to promote to the knight, c1 knight, and <laughs> this is a really funny line. But uh, I believe that after king d2, uh, king takes c1. Black white is still two pawns up, but it's not easy to right now to uh, win this because of the activity of black rook that there is uh, right now. Uh, let's say king g7, rook f5, king g6. Let's say rook two goes to e5 and rook c7. King b2. It's very important that there was c1 knight because if this was the same position of king on c2, the king would go to let's say to b3 and will cover the fourth rank. But right after king b2, rook c4. It's basically by only moves basically, but 
it, it works. It just that's why I decided to show this game because none of this has been, as to, at least to the best of my knowledge, has been uh, explored so far, and I just wanted to shed some uh, new light on this. Especially, I'm given a chance, you know, during the, the, the you know, uh, talking about end games uh, in this lecture. So, king f6, rook b5, rook takes f4, and the question is whether white can win this. And personally, I don't think that white has any realistic chances of winning this with correct defense by black. Let's say king b3, rook f3, king b4, uh, just king e7, and uh, I ask you rook b6. Because if a4, very likely the king is just you know coming in. And uh, it's also possible to start with rook f4, for instance, so it's not so easy to, you know, make any progress. If rook b6 try to hit on h6 pawn, we just throw in more checks. Rook b5, uh, rook f5, rook b5, rook f4. And uh, if a4, just king comes into the king's, the, the queen's side, and it's just not easy to make any further progress with, with white. So, uh, I, I just think that this this, this should be this, this this should be somehow drawn here. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's extremely difficult, and uh, in like real game, this would be why we have lots of lots of attempts to you know outplay the opponent. Uh, another possibility is rook g6, king f8, rook g1, and try to stop the spawn with the rook. But after rook c4, king f5. Let's say uh, c1, uh, sorry c1, c2, rook c1, king e7. I also don't really see what uh, white could do here next. Uh, like because black's rook is so active, and pawn and why our black and pawn c2 is basically forcing why our rook to be so passive on c1. Black should have normally enough uh, resources to uh, to make a draw here. Uh, so rook a7, rook a7 idea e6 was uh, by far uh, the most testing one. Even though uh, there are definitely good chances for black to say, save this, rook a7 creates a lot of practical problems that black would have to still resolve. And uh, like as we discussed in this line, it's not easy to you know figure out what to do here with, with black. Let's say rook 7 is not an easy move also to play. It's very easy to blunder this move, for instance. It's very easy to blunder. So uh, rook 7 would be, have to be played, and there right now even this king d3 and e7, c1 knight, I'm telling you that c1 actually knight makes lots of difference in this end game, that this is actually very likely drawn, it's also not an easy task. So uh, having said that, another possibility is king, so c3 is one move, king of 8 is another possibility, and right now one very very important idea that I really wanted to show is to play here king e4. And the idea is, also I don't think it was mentioned anywhere, Idea is to play simply f5, and if, because if we can get pa our pawn to f5, then pawn to f6, uh, there will also there will be always some mating nets and uh, some tactical ideas for 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 white. That's why uh, let's say if c white black has two moves, either rook e2 or c3, and if uh, rook e2, queen d4, rook h2, trying to basically attack the h4 pawn, but right now after a4, rook takes h4, uh, king e4. White has extremely big winning chances. Uh, for instance, if rook h1 is already lost, because a5, rook a1, a6, h5, and f5. And white pawns are just much faster. h4, f6, as I was saying, there are lots of tactical ideas, connected with rook a8. For now, king g8, rook a8, uh, king h7, and king d4 with idea of e6 and uh, f7, because immediately it would run into rook e1, but if we play this first, we attack on uh, c4, black is forced to uh, do something about it, and uh, I mean, major idea is of course to play e6 right now, and this is just game over. But, but if rook e1 happens, then a7 and the other pawn is promoting, so basically there is no way to stop uh, both pawns. Uh, so white is winning, and therefore in this position the best defense is rook h2, which I have, which I still have problems with understanding why it makes such a huge difference. Rook c7, rook a2. Uh, to be honest, I'm not not sure why uh, you know a7, uh, sorry a5 it doesn't really work, <laughs> but uh, you know sometimes engines make such weird so uh, I mean such a huge difference when you look at with the engine. Uh, so let's say if a5, let's say rook a2, I, I think, so at least, a6, c3, I think it has to do with the fact that pawn c2 is protected, which is kind of weird to, you know, if you think about it, but like, I guess it works. So if rook c7, let's say rook a2, uh, or even h5, uh, 
there there are still some chances for white because we got an extra pawn and uh, it black but black but black still has some chances because you know there's h pawn h pass pawn and uh, there are still some chances however uh, the bear defense is probably c3 because this is extremely tricky it's like even in this position if we can just get c4 pawn just from kind of principal point of view uh, if we can get c4 pawn we will have a pass pawn a5 on the queen side and still we have uh, this powerful pawn chain f45 so there are definitely good chances for white the best defense probably c3 but after very strong move a3 <laughs> the idea is again to sort of pre uh, um, i mean first of all the idea is to play rook c7 and we we'll after pawn a3 there is never any check on b4 uh, so like for instance after a4 there could be a problem with move like this uh, sorry rook b4 this and rook c4 there could be some issues with this therefore it's very important to play a3 in order not to allow this and uh, after rook a2 uh, king f5 because if f5 suddenly rook h2 could save the game but this is extremely difficult to figure out over the board rook a2 i remember was the only move and uh, i feel like in general white has very very good winning chances here let's say if c2 then rook c7 just uh, probably wins because right now f5 f6 again is coming in uh, here we, we can play king d5, rook a3, just take it. And the difference with this position relative to the pawn with the uh, king on f5 and pawn on f4 is that here our pawn uh, is already on f5 and uh, we can always play f6 by and create some tactical ideas around black king and by promoting, uh, you know, by making a pawn break with f6 or, uh, or e6. So uh, definitely here after rook a7, I'm not claiming that white is winning but white has extremely big chances of winning the game at least from practical perspective because there are so many traps for black and black has to be extremely cautious here and uh, yeah so this was the best chance and but just if we, if we want if we, if we were to wrap it up uh, rook a7 is the best move because it creates some threats it doesn't kind of give room for black to uh, i don't know i kind of just to play simply c3, c2, and just you know, make a draw like this. There are still lots of ideas here for uh, for black that black has to be. Uh, oh, sorry, for white, the black has to be careful about because right now e6 is a big threat and it has to be immediately sort of, sort of dealt with. Let's say king f8 or c3. If king f8, king e4, and f5, f6 is a very powerful idea that you know over the board could just win instantly. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think this is pretty much all for this game, and uh, this is pretty much all what I what I wanted to cover uh, today for about the rook end games. Uh, even though I analyzed it a lot, I didn't still full, fully like get to the total conclusion about the end game if it's winning or not. But anyway, there are so many ideas here, and and both for white and for black to try to defend it. That I, that I was thinking that is really worth it to show this game because it just shows shows how re, uh, how rich are rook end games and chess in general as a game. So yeah, that's all I have for today and uh, see you next next time. Bye.